Hey guys, I'm Austin. Welcome back to Budget Hunters TV. Today we're doing something kind of fun. Uh, it's not as fun. We're not going to be doing any hunting or fishing on today's video. Uh, but we're going to be doing some stuff that's going to prepare us for those things. And that is maintenance. <laughs> for some people it is the bane of their existence and for some people like me, which oh, I'm weird in that sense, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and so, and you take care of your stuff, your stuff will take care of you. And so what we're going to be doing today, this is my diamond bow. Uh, it's uh, about 60 pound uh, draw, which is the weight it takes to pull it back, which affects how fast the arrow goes, etc. And uh, it's pretty simple. I bought this. I paid $350 for this bow. I bought it second hand uh, from a good friend of mine who you guys will meet eventually. And uh, it is a compound bow, which you can see these little deals up here. And on the end, they're for like cams, or I think this is what they're called. I'm really new into archery, so I'm still learning. But uh, they once you pull it back so far, it actually gets easier. You, you reach a breaking point and you pull it back, and then it takes a lot of the weight off of you. So you're not sitting there holding back, having to pull back with 60 pounds the whole time you've got your arrow pulled back. But one of the things that has to be done with a bow is waxing the strings, which this is some limb saver string protectant, odorless and non-toxic. We're going to go through how to wax a bow. It's pretty simple. It's just like a tube of chapstick, that kind of thing. And uh, what you're going to do, and we'll go through this, is you're going to take this wax. And it's very much like candle wax, except it's a little bit softer. Is you're going to go over your strings with it. And you're going to put a little bit all down your strings. And so, you just rub it on. And you see it comes off. This one happens to be green. I'm sure there's other colors. But we'll rub it on the different parts of the string. And then you're going to take your fingers. And you're going to literally rub it. And get it hot. You want it to melt. Because it melts down into the strings. And so you're going to melt it down into the strings using your fingers. Rub your rubber fingers together, get nice and hot, <laughs> and keep it. Keep rubbing that into the strings. And the strings actually absorb the wax. It melts down into it, which is nice, and it keeps your string from wearing out. And part of being a budget hunter and <laughs> doing things that aren't going to make you go broke is taking care of the stuff you already have. Because the, more, the, more, the other hunters that I know, they think, oh, well, you know, I spend so much money, and you spend all this money, and you see people doing that. You'll see people spending thousands and thousands of dollars because they won't take care of what they already have. They don't appreciate what they got now. And so <laughs> this is our way to do it. If someone wants to go spend a whole bunch of money and not take care of their stuff and keep buying new things all the time because they break, because they weren't taken care of, they can do that. If I've shot it a few times, two or three times, I will go back and wax my strings again. And so we're just going to keep working that wax into the strings. And while you're doing this, I'm not just waxing. What I'm doing is I'm looking for any kind of signs of weakness, like any broken uh, strings, anything like that. Any, anything that might show me that this may malfunction in the future. And 60 pounds doesn't seem like a lot for some people, but... And that's that's okay. It's what I'm comfortable shooting, but when you get that under pressure, it can be bad. If you're not taking care of it, if you don't inspect your weapon, it can be a very bad thing. It can lead to accidents. People can get cut by these strings. I mean, they're very, they're under very high pressure, and so you do want to be very careful. And you don't have to use a lot of wax. You know, one of these should last you a while. You don't want to try to nickel and dime it to death either. You want to make sure that the strings are as well maintained as they can be. And you're not going to spend two hours doing this. This is a short process. I usually take anywhere from well, a few minutes to maybe ten minutes, depending upon how fast I'm moving that day. I've had my coffee yet. <laughs> and it's a, you know, and like I say, I know some people aren't going to enjoy this, and that's okay. They don't, they don't want to get their hands dirty and, you know, they don't want to 
do this, and you can you can take your bow to places that will do this for you. They'll wax your they'll wax it and do everything and do all your stuff for you, and that's okay. You can do that, but you're going to spend money. You're going to spend a lot more money than I did. I spent like three four dollars on a thing of wax, and I'm just sitting at home today because I'm not on, I'm not working today because we are off. This is Monday for the record, so whenever this video goes up, I think it's the tenth. Yeah, Monday, September 10th. And this is how you wax your bowstrings. It's nothing super complicated. It's not too hard. But guys, I am so excited about deer season. It's going to be so much fun. And I'll tell you, uh, I'm going to be in Oklahoma hunting this year. Uh, it'll be my first year there. Uh, I've been hunting... Uh, on public lands and I probably will be doing some of the Texas public lands this year I just haven't talked to my good friend that I hunt with for that for, for te hunting Texas uh, but I imagine we will be out there and I'll show you get to show you guys some of the uh, Texas public lands near here and show you how I hunt those and what I do and you'll get to see all of it it'll be fun when it comes to weaponry and stuff you know people say oh well you know you can you have to pay a lot to get into hunting and stuff like that because of the weapons. Well, here's the thing about it is, yeah, you can, and you can be, you can go as expensive as you want to go. Like I say, this stuff is nasty. I'm just going to use paper towel for right now, but I'm going to wash my hands because you don't want this stuff to stay on your hands all the time. Not that it's toxic or anything like that. It's just kind of gross. But that's wax bow, but... The nice thing about weapons, for the most part, and especially if you take care of them, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this, is you're probably only going to need one. And yeah, you may have to do minor repairs, like I may have to get my bow restrained at some point, or restrung, or however you want to say it. But it's not something you have to do every day. It's not an ongoing expense that costs thousands of dollars. Restringing a bow is not that expensive, especially if I happen to have a friend that does that kind of stuff. and so. I'll be, once I learn how to do it, I'll do it myself. And that's something I'm still learning process of. That stuff is gross. <sighs> but coming up here, here in just a second, and I'll switch over, but I'm going to show you guys how to clean a gun. Now, I've already cleaned my shotgun, so I'm not going to re-clean it. Uh, I will in another video. I'm just not going to do it right now. But uh, I have a, a 9mm pistol. It's made by Smith & Wesson. Uh, and I'm going to get it out. And I'm going to show you how to clean that. So hang tight for just one second. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys. I'm back. All right. This is my Smith & Wesson SD9VE. It is a semi-automatic 9mm. And yes, we'll do gun safety. You can see right through there ah, that there are no bullets in here. And this is a little slide over grip that I put on it. Uh, I just paid a few dollars. I think I got it off the Wish app, to be honest with you. I'm going to set this aside because it's fine. Okay, now, the biggest thing you want to worry about, your magazine and bullets away from your gun. You don't need to be mess putting those in while you're cleaning them. There's no purpose for that. So we're going to set it aside and move on. Now, <laughs> cleaning a gun can be a messy job, and most of the time it is. And so what you want to do is, if you can, go by yourself, or if you have an old towel, that works too. If you have an old towel you don't use, shop rag type of big thing, and you want to use that to clean your guns on, that's fine. That works. I found this, I've had it for a long time, I don't remember exactly how much I paid for it, probably in the neighborhood of about $10. And I've had it for years and years and years. It's been very well loved and well used is just a gun cleaning pad made by Dry Mate. This is one for uh, shotguns and rifles, uh, but it's large, it's 16 inches by 54 inches. So it's long and it's wide enough where I can get my guns out and not have make a big mess. So it's got a uh, rubbery finish on one side, and this is just like a cloth Kind of like the itchiest blanket that grandma used to have, you know what I'm talking about? And so, we're going to clean a gun today. 
And so what we're going to need is a gun cleaning kit. And a gun cleaning kit, there are tons and tons of different kinds of gun cleaning kits. And there's, uh, you want to make sure that when you're getting a gun cleaning kit, that it is a kit that includes the items that will, are necessary to clean your type of gun. This is kind of an all-in-one. I think I paid $30 for it, $35 for it from Walmart or Academy a long time ago. I've had it for many years. And uh, we're going to get into it. This is, this is what they look like. These are little brushes that go for inside the barrel. These are uh, actually soft little pad. Uh, they all attach brushes. A good set of brushes will do you well. And these are how you put your swabs and things like that through. Uh, this is uh, gun solvent, which you can buy at Walmart or anywhere else, I'm sure, if you need to a local store. Uh, gun oil are the two big components you're going to need. Now, there are a couple other things I'll show you to save you some time. And number one, you, you can buy these, they are very cheap. I think it's like three to four, five dollars for a bag. And they come like by the hundred, three hundred or so. And they're these little patches. They're cleaning patches. And they come in different sizes and you, you'll learn which one you need. And uh, this is just a little kind of microfiber cloth that I use for gun cleaning. It came with the kit. And it's a little great thing. I don't worry about getting it dirty because if it gets to that nasty, I'll just throw it away and go buy another one. I've used that the same one for probably five, six years. Also, one thing you want to keep with you, which fortunately they're super cheap, is Q-tips. Q-tips are one of the most underrated gun cleaning tools in existence. They are a lifesaver and they make your job so much easier and they're super cheap. I definitely recommend that if you're putting together or buying a gun cleaning kit, go ahead and get some Q-tips, leave them in your kit you will use them. Okay, let's get to the cleaning. So, we've established that the gun is empty. We close the chamber, it's very loud, sorry about that. Pull the trigger, get the pressure off. Now each gun takes down differently. There are lots of different guns out there, they all take apart differently. The, this one is very easy. I'm going to grip, pull back. There's two pins, if you see them right here, on both sides of the gun. And so I'm going to pull those down, and I'm going to push forward. And the slide comes right off. The spring is right here and it comes out. And then the barrel is right here and it comes out. So you have the slide, spring, barrel, and the rest. Now this is mostly polymer or plastic. Uh, there are metal components in it, but there's not a whole lot of cleaning that needs to be done to this, so we'll save this for last. Now one of the dirtiest parts of your gun is definitely going to be the barrel. And so we'll start with the barrel and you can see It'll focus on it. There is some black stuff that builds up on the on the uh, edge right here, which is where the bullet actually takes off from before it starts heading down the chamber. So you have a lot of the powder and residue that gets on there. Uh, and one thing you can tell if you if you hold your barrel in your hand and hold it up to a light, you can see the edge of the edges and the sides of the barrel. And there's what inside a barrel. There's these little lines that are cut in a circular motion, it's called rifling. And that's what give, generates the spin when a bullet departs from the firearm, which is what makes the gun accurate. Because if you go back to old muzzle loaders, when they shot, they had no rifling. It was just smooth bore, which is like a shotgun. They call them smooth bore because there's no rifling cut into the barrel. So they had no spin, which makes them horribly inaccurate. Fortunately for shotguns, they shoot a very wide pattern of a bunch of BBs, so you don't have to worry about that. But here's how we're going to get started. So we're going to get this. We're going to start getting this clean. So first thing we need to do is get out our gun cleaning solvent. Now, this this kit happened to come with outers in it, uh, which was it. I used it. I used all of it. And it was really good. I still have plenty of the oil left. It's something oil you do not want to use very much of. And I'll show you how much to use for a gun this size. Uh, and this is just a solvent. I, this is actually a refill. I just bought some cheap solvent at uh, my local Ace Hardware and uh, bought some solvent from them and I've refilled the, this since it happens to fit in my kit perfectly. So, yeah, it came that way. So I just refilled it off of that. It's a much bigger bottle. And it's not that expensive. And so we're going to take the solvent, dip Q-tip in there. Like I say, they're valuable. And we're going to put solvent, and you can use this stuff, you know, be 
<laughs> be liberal with it. You know, spread it around. Anything that you see that's dirty, you want to make sure you get that solvent all up in there. And so, I'm even gonna, since this is a very short barrel, you can actually use the Q-tip and put your solvent in that way. Now, you know, I'm sure someone out there has an issue with why with me doing that that way, and that's okay. Everybody, you know, if you got a reason why a Q-tip is bad, I'd love to hear it. I've been using them for years, and I've never had any issues. So if you got a better reason, let me know. Uh, the spring, it depends. <laughs> I generally don't ever put any solvent on my spring unless it just happens to look really dirty and then I'll clean it off. Right now my spring does not appear to have any dirt or oil or anything on it and so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to set it right over here. Now, we got my slide and you can see that this gun has been fired. It's been fired many times and there are look, what look like burn marks and they're not. They're, uh, it's, it's residue from the gun actually firing and so we're going to get a little more of that solvent and we're going to apply it into these little spots where I can see. And you can see some of that uh, black stuff actually starts coming off as soon as the uh, solvent hits it. And uh, which is which is good. I mean, I, I don't go too long without cleaning my gun. I generally try to clean it after every use. And I just shot this uh, about a week ago, and so it was definitely due to be cleaned. But I wanted to show you guys. How to do this. And if you have a larger gun, what you want to do is you have these little eyes that will screw into these. And so you'll screw them in and they make well, extensions and stuff like this is the extension for this one. But, uh, and so you can get it, use them into the longer guns. What you do is you take one of these patches and you're going to fold it. This is how I learned to do it. If you have a different way, let me know in the comments. You're going to fold it like a sailor's hat, okay? You're just going to fold it triangular. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the end, not the top, but the end, if it's her holding flat, of your little sailor's hat here. And you're going to get the very corner of it and put it through the eye. And you're going to pull it about halfway. So you're going to pull it about halfway through, right? And so you end up with something like this. And so what you could do, which I'm not going to show you, I'll show you guys since I'm explaining it to you anyway. Sorry, I don't have a longer gun to use it right now. It's clean because they're all clean. Uh, but you take this and you put it in. And as you go, you're going to push it through, pull it back. You can do it several times. You want to get make sure the solvent gets all up in the barrel and gets in those grooves. Uh, and the reason, one of the reasons it's so important to clean your guns, not just that they'll wear out over time, is that uh, there is a stuff called fouling, which is what happens to barrels. And those little uh, rifling we were talking about, those grooves that are cut into the barrel uh, that get a spin, your bullet, when you shoot, little pieces of metal do shear off or flake off, and they can get into those grooves. And that's actually a bad thing that you don't, you don't want that to happen, but it's going to, regardless of what you do, there's nothing you can do to prevent fouling from happening. It's going to happen. And so there's stuff you can do to help it out a little bit, but we'll not get into that. But when it gets in there and it beds itself in there, it will clog it up to where it starts acting like a smooth bore because those ridges that are cut in that rifling is not able to impart a spin on the bullet. It doesn't make it start twisting. And uh, so we're going to take our uh, fine, our hardest, not fine, but our hardest brush, and we're going to start getting some of that debris and that nasty stuff off, which you know, you'll go through brushes. I have a whole new set in back. They're super cheap, a few dollars for another three, but they're nothing, they're nothing expensive. And so you want to keep from doing it on the finish of the gun because then it'll get real scratched up. And, you know, if you don't care about that, that's fine. But I do, you know, I try to make my guns look nice, at least somewhat, you know, I do try to take care of them. I don't want them to get rusty and nasty, but we'll start getting some of that nastiness out of there. So we're going to get some of these, uh, these cloths, and just like I showed you earlier, 
what we're going to do, we're going to fold them the exact same way. We're going to put them through. Pull them halfway. You get all that nastiness out of your barrel. You're going to take these, put them in, and as you put them in, you want to spin. And it doesn't matter. You can do it. You, know, you can push and pull. That's fine. But you want to keep going. And you can see this thing starting to get dirtier and dirtier. It's losing its true life, which is good. It means it's getting the dirt out of the barrel. Now, this gun's not super dirty. I only maybe shot, oh, I don't know, 80 to 100 rounds out of it the last time. And so it didn't get super dirty. And so you know what you want to do, just to be sure, and make, take, take extra good care of your firearms, is we're going to load up another one. We're going to go through until these start coming out clean. And look at that. Nothing on it. How nice is that, huh? That didn't take that long. And the inside of that barrel, you want to have almost a mirror finish. And when you get it in, when you see light through the barrel and see all that nice mirror finish, the barrel's probably put in pretty good shape. They make these little things, which, word to the wise, these things hurt a little bit, okay? These little suckers, they're not fun. I think they're copper bristles, but they are not pleasant to hold on to. And so if you have hands that are not full of calluses like mine, uh, I would recommend, you know, using, you know, a thicker glove or pliers or a rag or something to pick them up with because they hurt. <laughs> same as this brush, it's the same material. This brush is very sharp on the end. Those little bristles hurt and they will stick in your fingers. And it's not a whole lot of fun when you get into that situation. So, so work my way around the barrel. Get that nastiness off of there as much as I can. And you're never going to clean a gun 100% perfect unless you're a gunsmith. And attempting to is just wasting your time. But you can get it, as, get it as close as you can. Try to take your time. And I've learned to enjoy it over the years. And so it's something I actually, I know, might be a little psychotic. But I actually have a lot of fun cleaning guns. And there's little spots, if you have big hands like me, that you can't get into with your finger. Like some of these little grooves. And so what I'll do is I'll lay the sheet out, take a Q-tip, and use the Q-tip to get down into those little grooves and push the paper in. Works pretty good. So if your fingers are a little, a little chubby or a little big like mine, then Q-tip be your new best friend. There's not a not a whole lot of cleaning that needs to go into this part uh, for for simple field cleaning like we're doing now. And I do recommend that you know every you know at least once a year or so do uh, if you if you can you know. Take your gun into a gunsmith and have them deep clean it. Because there's stuff that you're not going to get into normally that most of you and I don't deal with on a daily basis and it's not something that's going to be a right that's part of your regular cleaning. You know, getting down into some of the springs and things like that and some of the more interior parts. And some guns have more parts. There are guns that break down into five hundred, you know, five hundred parts, which I'm exaggerating, but this one happens to be pretty simple. Uh, it's very similar to uh, a Glock, which I know is everybody's big thing is a Glock, which is great. I don't have any problem against Glock, but I just like this one better. I just like the look of it and the feel of it in my hand a little bit better. Cause I, have a, I have a big meaty hand, and so I needed something that had a, a little bit more of a grip. The Glock didn't fit my hand very well. This it was just preference mostly. But now that we've got this clean, we've got all the nastiness and gun and bullet residue and stuff out of it. We're going to move on and uh, I'm just going to push this through. There we go. Getting residual little small pieces that we generally known. But we're going to move on to oiling. So we're going to put away our solvent. Make sure your lids are, make sure your lids are closed properly. If not, you're going to have a mess. Especially if you move your stuff around as much as I do. So this is gun oil. We're going to use one Q-tip to oil this entire gun. And we're going to use one side 
And so we're going to take our oil and dispense it over one side of a Q-tip. That is enough to oil this entire gun. I promise it is. And so any spots that you see where metal has touched metal, you want to put oil on there. And so I know that oil needs to go right here because that is where my gun slides when it functions. Because when it functions, it slide, this slide, which is why they call it that, well, actually goes back. And it's part of chambering another round and getting ejecting the last round. So anything that has hit, seen a lot of uh, abrasion, any places of abrasion, you want to make sure they get oiled specifically. For the record, do not use overuse oil. It can definitely mess your stuff up. So once you have a nice thin coat of oil, do not you know use this stuff very sparingly. Don't you don't use a lot if you don't have to. Now, gun is oiled, so we're going to start putting it back together. We waxed our strings, we cleaned our gun, and it wasn't that hard. It wasn't super complicated. And we will get a hundred times more use out of those out of those things by properly maintaining them. And how great is that? Hey guys. All right. So we're gonna be doing something kind of cool. Uh, I have no, I haven't got to do a whole lot of this in the other videos, but uh, we got the bow waxed, and so right now we're gonna shoot it and actually see what it kind of takes to shoot a compound bow. Now there are different styles for recurve and other bows. This is for compound specifically, so check with, check it out. You saw the bow earlier, kind of got it sitting right there. This is a release, and there are lots of different kinds of releases. Mine is a trigger release, which that's what I like. Everybody's got their own way to do it. But pretty simple. Goes around your wrist, just like a watch. Doesn't have to be super tight, which is good. It's good enough. So it's going to pull right here on my wrist. It's not going to come off. So, pretty cool. And this is my bow, as you guys have seen. And so how this works is I take the arrow, I put it through this, and it clips right here on this little D-ring. And then I take, it clips right here on the front of it, the bow the arrow does, right here on the front part. And then I take mine, and I clip my release, and I clip back here. And then I pull back, and when I get ready, I pull trigger. Pull like that. And it releases this, sending the arrow forward. So I'm going to move you guys over, show you how this works. Okay, guys. So we have my bow. I'm going to get an arrow. And I'm shooting... Uh, Gold Tip Hunter XT 340s is the name of this. And I have a True Glow Sights and a little wrist strap. This, like I say, this all came assembled when I bought it, when I bought it from the guy. He already had all the stuff on here, so I didn't have to do anything. You'll meet that guy later. So I'm gonna put my release on, got my arrow clipped in, and I'm gonna Put my hand, my finger, behind the release. I don't want to put me in front of that trigger. And so what I'm going to do, and we'll get into all the fine tips in the, on another video, is I'm going to draw back. Find my spot. And shoot. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? I'm going to shoot two more times. And we'll go, then we'll go see where I'm at. Let's go see how I did. So, I didn't do too bad. Uh, let's take a look. So, not horrible for my first three arrows of the day. We'll pull them out. One. Two. And three. a little hot from here. Let's try again.
How'd I do, guys? <laughs> All right. This one's a little bit high. That's okay. My phone was ringing in my pocket while I was shooting. So, <laughs> that was, that's something you're not going to probably get in the woods because I'll probably have my phone turned off. But, let's that look too, okay? I'm going to keep shooting and uh, I'll see you guys back inside. Okay. Hey guys, <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for sticking with me through that. I know I'm not the best archer. I'm still learning. It's uh, something new that I've taken up. Uh, I've got a good friend that's been teaching me everything I know. It's the same guy I bought the bow from. It is a diamond bow. I don't know which model specifically, uh, but it's so much fun. <laughs> we got it waxed. We got it. We shot it. It's still the sights are still on. Uh, we got the gun cleaned. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it wasn't, you know, it's probably going to be a little bit long and I'm trying to keep my videos as short as possible. But, uh, the next time you see me, uh, we're going to be doing a fishing video and we're going to be using the pin rod and hopefully you guys will enjoy seeing that. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, don't forget that Budget Hunters TV, uh, without spaces has a Facebook and we are also on Instagram. So check us out there, uh, stop by and say hello. And just to remind you guys, my name is Austin. So if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. And uh, I'll try to answer them as quick as I can, comment, and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. So thank you a lot.